is a framework and a process for bio-inspired innovation. It's a practice of learning from nature uh, about the strategies that organisms use for survival. It is based on 26 life principles and um, it is organized, those 26 life principles are organized around six master principles under which all other principles align. The life principles are patterns of nature that all organisms use to survive. And I'm going to take the liberty to disrupt my own process and start somewhere else. This is one of the six life principles. It's called adapt to changing conditions. You see here a ptarmigan. That's a ground bird that lives in North America. And it changes the colors of its coat with the seasons. So in the winter, it is completely white. In the summer, it's completely brown. And in between, it's checkered. And I need your participation for the next part. So I actually want all of you to stand up, please. <laughs> and move one chair over to adapt to changing conditions. Go. Move one chair over. Move one chair over and sit back down. Self-organize. Thank you. Thank you. So that was a small practice of adapting to changing conditions. Note for yourself whether you were resisting the change, whether you're comfortable with the new change, and uh, practice it out there with other people. <laughs> the next life principle I want to talk about is um, locally, be locally attuned and responsive. And as you can see in the image, you see the owl totally melting into the background. So if we take an example, for instance, uh, from a local issue. I've heard that a lot of people, a lot of young people, don't see the opportunities for themselves here in this beautiful place and uh, might want to leave and go and find those somewhere else. So the invitation is to find a way to be locally attuned to the community that's here and the opportunities that are here. And then once you're part of the system, then you can start changing it from the inside out. Yeah? Another life principle is be resource efficient in terms of material and energy. And what you see here are honeybees. And in particular, we're looking at the combs. So the hexagon-shaped hexagon compartments into which they deposit the honey. And it is, in particular, the shape that's of interest here. So it has six corners, and that's a very efficient shape. Mo the most compartments will fit into one space if these are in hexagons. If you had squares, you wouldn't get as many compartments in there. The other thing is that this hexagon shape also has a very strong stability. So uh, you can make the walls thinner, so you save materials in the process. An example of this in, in this local uh, context is that, for instance, this beautiful decoration here, stage design, is made out of boxes, as you can see. These boxes are upcycled. They came from some other purpose and have been repurposed to be here for your enjoyment. So here's an invitation. Uh, you got a bag, you got all kinds of materials. Once you have looked through them, through all the paper, and if you think like you don't need that anymore, give it to somebody else, or deposit it in the container outside. Here's another life principle, use live-friendly chemistry. 
And uh, you see these beautiful bright colors of a peacock here. You might be surprised that these colors are not made by pigments. The only pigment is actually brown. The rest of the colors is generated by the structure of the material and the light uh, that reflects upon it. So here's something I want us to try again. I want all of you to stand up again. Thank you. And this half, turn around and look towards the back. And this half, stay where you're at. And now all of you turn 180 degrees in your space. Thank you. Beautiful. Turn again, 180 degrees. Let's do it one more time. Thank you. Sit back down. <laughs> so that was an example of a small change in the structure of this community here, this space here. And notice for yourself if you notice the difference. Is there a difference in your experience or did you notice a difference in the pattern of the group? Another ma master life principle is evolve to survive. And most organisms have some form of a, an egg or a seed in which the secret of life is held. So that's the instruction manual for life, or the DNA. And nature learns and evolves by making changes in that DNA formula. And it seemingly does so by accident. So mutations happen. And that means some of those mutations could be a good idea, and they, they might bring an advantage to the organism, or they may be a real an error that does not bring anything except pain. And yet, it's the only way that life can learn, if it explores it in this way, by making changes, real mutations. So I'm wondering what would happen if our organizational or educational systems were oriented around considering mistakes as feedback or as an opportunity for innovation instead of failure? What kind of different schools would we have? This is a picture of my grandbaby. He'll be born next year. And the master principle here is integrate development with growth. And that means that Nature has made it so that this embryo doesn't grow a body first and then it lays down neural pathways all at once. It grows actually in stages. And it might grow some tissue and then part of the brain that can do something with that tissue, which then allows it to have more tissue grown and then lay down another neuro, neuro, neuro path and so forth. Sometimes that happens simultaneously and um, other times that happens um, consecutively. So I want to practice that with you. And I'm actually going to ask you to sing with me so that we can demonstrate the principle. We're going to sing a canon. I'm going to sing it first. And then I'm going to ask the first few rows to follow me in a certain way. Okay? So the canon is very easy. And we're only going to need the first two lines of that. So it's like, row, row, row your boat gently down the stream. Merrily, 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 life is but a dream. Row, row, row your boat. Row, row, row your boat. Row, row, row your boat. Row, row, row your boat gently down the stream. Gently down the stream. Gently down the stream. Gently down the stream. Merrily, 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 merrily. Merrily, 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 merrily. Merrily, 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 merrily. Life is but a dream. Life is but a dream. Life is but a dream. Beautiful. 
Beautiful. Thank you. So if we can um, think of the 26 life principles as an instruction for designing our lives and organizations, we could think of them as the alphabet of life. Because life creates conditions conducive to life. Let's repeat the six principles that we have learned together. Be resource efficient in material and energy. Adapt to changing conditions. Be locally attuned and responsive. Use life-friendly chemistry. Integrate development with growth. Evolve to survive. Here they are again. And what is it all about? It's all about real life. And real life is an art. And art cultivates disruption. So what might an education look like that brings nature and life and art together? We have some examples. Uh, I'm going to ask a video to be played for shift design. And shift design is um, an alternative, transformative learning opportunity. Uh, it happens in different places around the world, and I would like to bring it to Austria in 2017. And for instance, this past June, we had 100 people show up in Alabama, United States, and we worked on, for a whole week with these 100 people on developing a playground that was um, built for all abilities. And at the end of the week, we had uh, disabled children come in a bus and uh, tried out the playground or our prototype for it. So let's see what it looks like. So that was an example of bringing nature and life and art, or the creative process, the design process, together to solve uh, problems in human systems. Thank you.